All too often, virtually always, the individuals and corporations and industries that do the most to damage our climate walk totally free of any consequences. And the way things are set up, it's very difficult to see how that could change. But there are ideas out there and joining us now is an individual who has one who might make it easier to hold them accountable. Larissa Parker, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks so much for having me. Uh, very glad to have you here. So um, look, you you wrote a very notable essay where you, um, you you had an idea of how we could change things to make it easier to um, you know move in the right direction when it comes to the climate crisis. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, sure. So my essay is really about holding political leaders and current governments today accountable for implementing policies that are not only insufficient to tackle climate change, but also contradict climate efforts and pollute more. I think today governments are guilty of this all around the world where they tout big targets and then don't fulfill them. And so my idea is really about giving rights to current youth, but also future communities uh, the right to act on that future harm. And so to launch court cases about maybe even the right to survive. Um, and, and eventually that would uh, sort of help governments have stronger incentives to, to act and, and, and put forward stronger policies. So um, when politicians talk, they often talk about the future, you know, and doing right by our kids and our grandkids, whether we have them already or not. And yet we don't we don't actually structurally have anything in place to make that a requirement. So this, at least in the United States, is a somewhat controversial um, stance to take. Uh, as you've been you know, talking with people, um, what, what do people think about this idea? Is it something that could uh, find wide approval? Well, I, I think it is controversial uh, in a, a lot of Western legal systems. Uh, I'm currently a law student in Montreal and I think um, there's this general sort of overarching issue. Uh, that legal systems aren't really equipped to handle future effects or, or future harm. And so climate change poses a problem in particular because we're talking about emissions that take 50, 60 years to manifest. And uh, it's really kind of unclear how those are going to impact communities and where those are going to be impacted the most or felt the most. Uh, and so uh, I think the general sentiment is you don't want to hold people accountable for something that hasn't happened yet or for something that you're not sure um, will happen. And I think, although that's so understandable, there, I think science is helping change that. And in the context of climate change, this is really the problem of our time. And, and we're already experiencing it all around the world. Uh, and I think now certain science is helping people translate, okay, this is what a policy will translate into in terms of GHG emissions. And based on that trajectory, uh, we can predict X and X warming. And I think based on that kind of data, we're seeing this increased number of lawsuits that are trying to use that science uh, and, 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 and really launch change. And you know, it, it occurs to me that while in the United States, I don't hear about that sort of thing necessarily being done by our government. Our government does do, you know, budgetary and economic forecasts of the likely impacts of legislation, even really big, really hard to model. Like the ACA, what effect is that going to have on the federal budget deficit in 10 years? I mean, they have scientists that come together and then scores are, are generated from that. Some legislation has died because the, uh, the estimation of what effect it'll have could be too negative. So is it really that big of a leap to do those same sorts of calculations when it comes to our climate and our environment? In my opinion, no. I think also now we have increased reporting uh, that's put like sort of reporting requirements that are put on uh, businesses and, and especially industrial projects. And I think we have the numbers and um, I mean, every year the IPCC comes out with with more pretty damning science that, that we're really dealing with a problem that is going to have absolutely devastating effects. And, and the people who are responsible, or at least the people who can do something about it and influence policy and influence change, should be held accountable to do that. So uh, you mentioned that the, uh, this current system, at least in Western countries, is not generally, it's not in place. But are there efforts in any countries? Have we seen any legal systems moving in the direction that you're advocating? Yeah, there are quite a few actually. I think most famously there's a case in the Philippines uh, where um, the government was going to issue a huge amount of commercial logging licenses. And I think it was going to impact something like 4 million hectares uh, of a forest. And uh, the court actually decided um, that 
in the name of intergenerational responsibility, which is, I think, really cool, actually, as a concept, uh, that current generations and, and current policy decisions would have devastating effects uh, or could have devastating effects on, on future people. And, and they don't have a say in um, policy making, of course. So the court actually ruled that that number was uh, of logging licenses was way too high, uh, in, and and they won, which was pretty cool. We see similar cases, I think, um, in India, in Pakistan, and of course, rights based litigation is is coming to the U.S. and Canada. Canada had three cases, I think, come up last year alone, and it's pretty exciting. Yeah, definitely, and um, you know, and puts. I guess more pressure on those uh, looking ahead to future elections, like our judicial system, the, the, the judges that end up getting nominated are gonna be really important for the future of these sorts of uh, cases. Um, for you individually in your essay, you also talk about how you got involved in climate activism. It's something, uh, we, we've interviewed a number of different youth climate activists and activist groups on the, on the, the damage report. So I'd love to know more about how you got involved in this issue. Well, I mean, I think it goes back and since I was I mean, a high school student, um, I, I think uh, for me, it's always been devastating to hear how climate change impacts communities across the world. Uh, I did my master's on the impacts of climate change on a small island state uh, called Rarotonga, Cook Islands. And uh, just speaking with community members about not just the economic effects, but the social and cultural effects of climate change, uh, it, it's really, I mean, it's astounding that um, we see these kinds of impacts happening across the world, especially to communities that have very little responsibility for the problem, might I add. Um, communities that uh, like have lived on subsistence <laughs> living for a really long time and, and to have them, uh, I mean, undergo these impacts. And, and, and it really, when we're talking about cultural and social impacts, these are also impacts to identity. Yeah. People don't know who they are and, and where they belong. And I mean, small islands especially don't know where to go. Uh, I think um, there's also this like, very odd uh, power dynamics in this problem. We have, I think, cu the countries who are responsible for emitting the most um, are, are are really unchecked right now. And yeah. I think there should be a way to hold them accountable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you rightly point out that those who have done the least damage to the environment are suffering the worst impacts, even to the point of some of these nations literally disappearing under the rising oceans. So, yeah. um, any future effort should, of course, involve aid to those people. Uh, Larissa Parker, very much appreciate you joining us to talk about this topic, and thank you for the essay you wrote. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for watching this clip from The Damage Report. For more content from the show and access to TYT Network members only exclusives, go to tyt.com slash Brooke. Wait, no, it's tyt.com slash John. Go to tyt.com slash John to sign up.